We live in a society full of injustice where only the rich and powerful can thrive. The view of a student protester France 24 spoke to for today's focus report on South Korea's political crisis. Massive protests have been held in recent weeks demanding the president's resignation. Park Geun-hye faces an impeachment vote on Friday over a corruption and influence peddling scandal. Several top businessmen questioned by lawmakers this Tuesday about donations made to foundations linked to the president. Justin McCurry reports. Gwanghwamun Square is the epicenter of South Korea's popular rebellion against its embattled president, Park Geun-hye. Last week, Park said she was ready to step down over her involvement in a corruption scandal, but would leave parliament to decide the timing. That offer has angered people gathered here in central Seoul. I think the government has reached the end of its life, and her statement is just a ploy to buy herself some more time. I think it's a big victory for us, because she submitted to the demands of the people. Park's offer to step down is a minor victory for the hundreds of thousands of people who have been congregating in Seoul for several weekends to demand her resignation. Students have been prominent at the protests. Those attending this women's university have even skipped class to make their voices heard. We have reached the point where democracy has been destroyed, so we'll put our studies to one side for a while and take to the streets. With youth unemployment on the rise, members of this generation of South Korean graduates fear their future is being snatched away from them. For Sungun Kim, who leads the protest group at her campus, Park symbolizes a South Korean elite that's desperate to hold on to power. I think President Park is blocking young people from playing a part in society and influencing their own future. We live in a society full of injustice, where hard work gets you nowhere, and only the rich and powerful can thrive. These farmers travelled long distances to attend the demonstration. But just as they were about to reach Seoul, they were stopped by police, who were concerned that too many people were flooding into the capital. <laughs> the farmers blamed Park for falling rice prices, a trend they say is damaging their livelihoods. During the presidential elections, she said she would guarantee a price tag of $200 per bag of rice. In rural areas, this promise was largely displayed on banners and posters. She got elected, and now a bag of rice costs less than $120. This has happened because she opened up the domestic rice markets of foreign competition, even though South Korea already had a rice surplus. That's why farmers like me are so mad at her. With people from all social backgrounds against her, Park's approval rating has fallen to a record low of just 4 per cent. I don't know which slogan to use for this week's demo, to demand her to resign or to be impeached. I guess resignation would be more democratic than impeachment. For this artist and demonstrator, Park, the daughter of Park Chung-hee, a dictator who ruled South Korea in the 1960s and 70s, history is repeating itself. It feels like she's a monarch, not a president. It's like we're living in the past. She's the daughter of a dictator, and now she too has become one. Shin usually paints murals on the walls in his neighborhood. But today he's turned his hand to banners denouncing Park that will be displayed alongside countless others at the demonstration. She's monopolized the power that was given to her by the people. It's madness. In my eyes, she's no longer human. On November the 26th, more than one and a half million people gathered in Gwanghwamun Square. South Korea hasn't witnessed protests this big since those demanding that the country become a democracy in 1987. But a few kilometers away, another, smaller demonstration is taking place. The media opinion polls are a sham. If they'd done it properly, the results would have been much different. Our President Park's approval ratings would be much higher. These protesters, numbering in their hundreds, are all that's left of Park's public support base. She's suspected of helping Choi, her friend and confidant, receive millions of dollars in donations for her foundations. But these conservative protesters believe Park has been treated unfairly. 
South Korea's constitution states that people are innocent until proven guilty. But this principle is not being applied to our president. Instead, her critics have abandoned this principle and call her a criminal and demand her resignation. It makes no sense. As darkness falls, the much bigger demonstration in central Seoul resembles a vigil, with many protesters holding up candles. The people here have vowed to keep returning to the square until Park resigns. Park's future is now in the hands of the opposition-controlled National Assembly. Her fate could be decided on Friday, when lawmakers vote on an impeachment motion. For more on this, I'm now joined in the studio by Juliette Morillo, an expert on the Korean Peninsula and the author of 100 Questions on North Korea. Hello, thank you very much for coming in. Hello. Now, before we talk about the president, I'd like to talk about South Korean society generally, because what I found quite striking in this report is that we hear a student protesters say uh, only the rich and powerful can thrive. Is that a sentiment uh, that's quite widespread in South Korea? Yes, indeed. What we're seeing today is the tip of the iceberg. Underneath, you have some kind of a very, uh, very big resentment that is rooted in history. The Koreans do have a word for it. They call it Han. That's some kind of resentment, the, the feeling that they have never been able to uh, master their own destiny. And they have always been ruled by uh, kings or presidents or lawmakers uh, that are corrupted. And today, uh, the youth, uh, you know the youth today in Korea, I mean, you think about K-pop, Gangnam style, and at the same time, they see this, uh, the, the bottom of the iceberg, these uh, old elites, these families, who are still ruling the country like princesses. Just remember, I think it was one year ago, uh, in 2015, you had uh, the daughter of a Korean air chairman who asked a plane to taxi back to the airport just because she was being served peanuts on a China plate and it should have been in a bag. So it was just a small thing that shows how, how much people no longer want to be, uh, to have s big families and especially these chaebol uh, ruling them. Well, that's the thing. I mean, President Park came to power four years ago, promising to overhaul the country's biggest family-owned companies. Um, now she stands accused of conspiring to extort millions of dollars from these very same corporations. So why not resign? She's got 4% popularity ratings, as we saw in that report. She's holding to power. She's buying time. She won't resign. And in fact, it was very clever. Her own party a few days ago uh, asked her uh, to resign. It would have been a way to save face for her. She would have resigned in April. But I think that all these protests, the, the protests last week in the streets, you had over 2 million people uh, protesting and asking for her impeachment. And I think it was too much anger. So they decided she should be impeached. But it's still not quite so sure because she has to have uh, two thirds uh, of the parliament voting for the impeachment. So on one side you have, of course, the opposition and you also have members of her own party. The so how many are we talking about? How many members of her own party would need to vote for the impeachment to happen? About 40. And they're ready to vote for it. And you think uh, it'll happen? I think it will happen. If they, I mean, the other solution would, that would have been stepping down, would have avoiding losing face, so that her own party doesn't have to vote against her. But it's too late now. So, do you think we will no more, no longer see in South Korea a daughter of take power? No, I think this is or a over. son of. Course. And the striking thing is that uh, even the people who voted for her, of course, we just saw that some people still believe in her. But I think that her own party people were disappointed when they voted for her. Uh, they expected somebody as harsh as uh, just like her father, a dictator. And they were disappointed because they just discovered they had a weak president at the head of the state. So is there anyone waiting in the wings? Well, I would say the only person who could uh, take advantage of this is uh, UN Chief Ban Ki-moon. Uh, he might come back. Uh, the international community sees him as somebody who is kind of uh, very clean and somewhat weak. But for Koreans, he's, uh, he has some personality. They're proud that uh, he's been a UN chief for so many years. And it might save the senuri, but you'd 
the president's party. But you should also know that when you have elections in Korea, parties just get formed before the election. So he might be the outsider that might save the situation. Whether it's him or someone else, what were the main challenges, what would the priorities be for the next leader in South Korea? Well, first of all, one of the priorities will be dealing with uh, North Korea. Uh, until now, I mean, it seems that this uh, Che Sun Chil, uh, this uh, advisor, advised her against uh, North Korea. For instance, they closed uh, this uh, commercial zone, Khe Song, uh, between North Korea and South Korea. So it was even harder than with uh, previous uh, President Lee Myung Bak. So North Korea, and then probably try and give, for instance, employment to the youth. You have about 10 percent unemployment in uh, South Korea, and the youth call their own country Hell Chosun, which means Hell Korea. They're, even if they have degrees, they prefer going abroad and doing something else and leaving Korea, and that's really a tragedy. All right. Well, we really appreciate your time and your analysis. Thank you very much indeed. Julia Tomoyo, an expert on the Korean Peninsula and again, the author of 100 Questions on North Korea. Thank you very much.